P2P databases with Node.js featuring Hyper-B. This is a workshop on P2P databases. I'm Tom Wilson and I will go through this workshop and we're going to learn how peer-to-peer -peer and decentralized web kind of works. And then um, we're going to learn how to use Hyper-B, a peer-to-peer -peer database which is a little bit different than your traditional da database. Um, as we go through this, we'll use a client line application, CLI, called uh, Hyperspace or Hype. And uh, we'll create a database. We'll connect to that database, build a little app, actually write to the database. And then we'll create another app on another server and we'll um, query that database via the P2P network. I think this will be really fun and uh, give you a, a different side of Node.js, a different, a um, little bit different use case than what you may normally use Node.js for. So let's dig in. I've got two uh, tabs open, a um, Gitpod uh, virtual machine P2P DB writer one and another Gitpod virtual machine P2P DB reader one. And what we're going to do is we're going to build the app um, to create movies in our database on the writer one. And then on the reader run one, we're going to build another app that's going to read that um, through the peer to peer network. So we'll dig in to see how that all works and um yeah it, sh it should be a lot of fun um for those who don't know peer-to-peer -peer is a technology where there's no dependency on centralized servers to share information uh, some call peer p2p the decentralized web i think the decentralized web is a little bit more broader than p2p uh, basically p2p um, just allows for a peer to um, write information and another peer to receive that information without having to go through a centralized system. In other words, the data is not passing through. You may be familiar with things like BitTorrent or WebRTC. Both of those are kind of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, networks. And um, what we're going to do is build um, or work with a database that's built for peer-to-peer -peer or built to, to move through these um, networks. Um, so what that means is that you can uh, create a database on your local system and basically replicate it or, or publish it to a peer-to-peer -peer network. In this case, we'll do it to the DHT um, and that network uh, will be a client that can discover that using a key. And by grabbing that key, they will be able to access all the, the data in, in that database without having to, um, you know, load up a web server or go to the cloud or, or anything like that. Just having an internet connection will create that um, accessibility. So, um, We'll be showing off kind of the, the work um, from Hyper Protocol. It's a uh, group that's focused on building these peer-to-peer -to -peer technologies and all the tools we're showing are node modules they built and provided for the community. And uh, it's really cool. So let's um, look at my screen and we'll get started so right here we've got uh, a git pod which is just a virtual machine and we're going to um, first install the hyperspace cli so we'll do npm install g for global at hyperspace cli slash cli and what this tool is is just um, a way to to run the peer-to-peer -peer network client without you having to 
do a bunch of things. So the hyper protocol is a bunch of different modules all composed together. And this hyperspace CLI really makes it easy for us to use versus having to know which modules kind of combine with the others and, and work through all that. So with um, the hyper uh, space CLI, which is known as uh, HYP hype, we can uh, start the service in the background. So this will start our um, peer to peer network server or service. And, and it's just a client. And if we, you know, kind of uh, call info, we can see that we don't have any kind of um, projects active. And there's two kind of projects that you can build on this peer to peer network, a, a hyper drive, which is a way to kind of share files from one system to another and a hyper B which um, the B is kind of for B-Treve, which um, is a very common kind of database structure. So Hyper-B is the database structure. And uh, that's what we're going to do. But before we do that, let's just um, create a standard kind of Node.js project. Uh, I use Yarn, so I'm going to do uh, Yarn init Y. And um, I'm going to increase the size of the screen because I'm sure that's probably hard to, to read. So let's see if that's a little bit better. And I'm going to get rid of my um, prompt there. And let's do a little bit more. Cool. And so what we're going to do is just, um, we set up a, a Node.js project. Let's install some dependencies. The first dependent, dependency we're gonna install is Express. And then we're gonna install Hyperspace, which is a Node module client that'll allow us to connect to the PDP service that's running on our system. And then um, Hyper-B. And Hyper-B kind of sits on top of Hyperspace and it provides all of the database structures. So we're going to install those in our client here. And then um, we're going to create a server.js file. Let's open that up. And what we're going to do is just stage this with a uh, simple, you know, kind of web app. And we're going to kind of create movies. So um, I'm going to pull in Express. Then I'm going to copy kind of the HTML of our app that we're going to use. And, and again, this is just a way to give us a little bit visually uh, better representation of what's going on. So this is our little web app. It's uh, got a form where we can post a movie and then it's got a place where we can list movies. Um, and now we're gonna create our Express app. And we're going to have an endpoint for getting the movies. And then it's just going to send HTML. So we set the content type. And then we send, you know, like a dummy line item. No movie movies. Yet. Okay. So that's our get movies, and then we'll do a get root, and the, the root's going to send our app. So we're going to set the header.
and we're going to send index. Okay. And we'll listen. on port 3000. So this is just a um, really contrived demo just to give us something to kind of visualize during this workshop. So we've got um, NodeMon. NodeMon will basically restart every time we make changes and we're going to just run server.js um, using MPX. Basically, we just don't have to install it globally. So now we've got our server working it, I'm gonna open it in the preview pane and you can see our, our little app. So we've got um, a header, some uh, movies, and then we've got a little form that we can add movies to. And then we've got our list of no movies yet. Um, so that's great. Now we just need one more thing. We need to handle the post of the form. So we're going to add that here at post slash request response and and it sends a json payload so we're going to use some middleware to basically convert the body to json we'll use express json here and now what we're going to do is so so when we do the post it's expecting to receive a, a movie so we'll we'll get the uh title um from request.body and then we're gonna kind of set the header to content type oops text html and then we're going to send a new line item and it's going to have the title in it. Li. There we go. Now, if uh, we refresh this page and we add Ghostbusters, right? And hit add, it refreshes the Ghostbusters. So this is just a sample app to test our peer-to-peer -peer stuff with. Now we're going to create a new file to add all of our peer-to-peer -peer stuff. So we're going to create db.js. And what we need to do is we need to get a key for our, our, our database. In order to get that key, um, there's several ways you can do it, but I found the most easiest way is to use the CLI. So I'm going to do uh, hype B or create B. Hype create B. And that's going to give me my, my key for my database. Now I can use that key in my code to access the database. So that's kind of like the database name, although it's a global hash that um, if you replicate on a peer-to-peer -peer network, you can use that to connect, as we'll see in the future. So now let's open um, the DBJS. And we're going to need a couple of things in our DBJS. Um, we're going to need hyperspace and Hyper-B. So hyperspace comes with a client. And Hyper-B is just a uh, class, right? So we'll fire Hyper-B, super. And now we're gonna instantiate our client. Well, let's go ahead and just um, call this uh, movies DB and we'll paste our key in so we don't forget to do that. Um, and now we're going to create our client. So we're going to say new client. And um, so it's a bunch of modules in this hyperspace universe. And the client is the hyperspace client. It has a store. And that store is where we're going to get a um, 
hypercore. And a hypercore is an append only log, and we're going to put hyperb on top of it, which um, is a lot to take in, and, and I understand that. Um, but but basically, we're going to use these underneath peer to peer technologies, but we're going to put a database kind of API on top of it, so that we can work with it more effectively and, and leverage this um, this networking protocol to um, do things that we normally do with, with databases. So with that, we're going to get our store, which will get it from the client and it's called core store. And then, cause it's kind of a factory that creates cores, hyper cores. So we're going to get a hyper core and we're going to call store dot get, and we're going to pass it in our um, key up here so movies db and that will give us a hypercore now we can wrap our hyperb database uh, logic on top of that and we just do that by saying new hyper b core and then we will say key encoding utf8 for a string and value encoding JSON. And that um, Hyper-B is a, a key value store. It, it models the level down kind of API. So you can put data, you can get data, and you can list data or query data from a uh, stream. So we'll, we'll work through that. But the um, first thing we're going to do is create a um, add function. So we want to do exports uh, add equals a sync function and we're going to take a movie and then what we're going to do is add that to our database so we're going to just return um i have to put a weight on here but we can db put and we need some sort of identifier and then a value. So it's key value. So the movie is our value. We need an identifier. I'm going to use um, a CUID because it's kind of time-based. And we'll get that from the CUID module. Which we'll need to install. Okay, and um, that's our add, and we'll do the list in just a minute. But basically, we're just calling db.put, and it's going to put whatever we pass as the movie into our database. Uh, pretty straightforward. So we'll bring in the database module here, and we'll just um, bring out add. Like that and in our post now we will call add right add request body and that's going to put our movie title into the database and um, yeah we'll just we'll just stop start there and do mpx node mon server js okay and this is not going to work so we're going to say added to db right so let's type a movie groundhog day okay cool so we got added to the database now what we need to do is get it out but let's go into our command line here and see if we can't find it using the CLI so if we do hype info we should see that we have our hyper B running with 38 
and we can take our big long key here we can do hype dot uh, uh, b as command and then list and then hyper and and paste in this key and it should uh, list out our data cool so we do have data in there we have a id of this long cuid and we have a value of an object that has a title it's groundhog day now we can also do a list and do um, a slash we can do a get and then follow that by a slash and an id and it should um, kind of pull out the exact document um, Oops, hype, getting a little lag here. Um, B, get, hyper, oops, just copy that. Okay, yep, and we got the object. So. Now we want to build our, our list. And in order to do that, if you're familiar with the um, level down API, you use create read stream. Create read stream creates a stream that um, allows you to read, um, read data, process that um, in, in kind of the Node.js streams kind of uh, way. So we're gonna, build that out and we're just going to convert it to promises because um, that's a little bit easier to work with uh, so we'll do a sync function and we'll set up our kind of catcher for all of our movies in an array and then we're just going to do a, a wait new promise our resolve and we're going to say db create read stream and then on data say movie we'll say movies push movie right so in movie it's going to have a key and a value. So we want to push the value in our list like that. And then on in, we're going to call resolve. And that should um, end that promise. Right. And then we can return our movies. The color like that. So we use this create read stream and you can um, add uh, options in here and say greater than whatever or less than whatever on the key. So if you use kind of um, a, a key, you can do range queries essentially on there. And what's cool about peer to peer is if you're a remote, unless there's a million records in the peer that you're um, database but you do a range query for only 10 of them then you only download 10 you don't download all a million so you can create very highly optimized kind of um, results uh, through the peer-to-peer -peer network which is pretty cool so let's wire this up and make sure it works so we've got our db and one of the places we want to make sure it works is when we get our movies so we're going to um, pull in the list function. And then we're going to make this in a sync function and say movies equals await list, which should return the movies and they're a list of objects. And we want kind of a string of line items. So in order to do that, we're going to um, just simply do some 
uh, map over an array. So we get an array of objects. We're going to map over that and each object will be a movie. And then we're going to want to return a line item of that movie title. Right. And then we're going to want to uh, join that as a single string. And I think that should be good. If we run our server. Now, when we uh, list, we should get the movie. Oh, no. Let's see what we did wrong. Um, S is not defined. Yeah. It is. Okay. And we do. We get Groundhog Day. Awesome. So, when we add a new movie, we can do the same thing. Uh, we can get our movies... And again, um, we probably optimize this, but this is just a demo, so we're just going to keep it simple. Um, so now, if we refresh, let's see, what did we break? Yeah, so we just need to make this a sync. Okay, now if we refresh, We've got our movie, and if we add another movie, let's see, let's refresh. We got them both in, so something is not quite right. So we do await add. There we go. Await add. And then we call our list. And that should work. So let's go Caddy Shack. Cool. And Meatballs. Sweet. We have a, <laughs> a basic database working, um, but we want to be able to access this from a different server. So, um, well, it's cool that we have this working on, on this server or this peer. We want to be able to read these movies on, a, on another peer. So in order to do that, we're going to go to our reader, um, get pod, and we're going to do some similar things. Let me bump up the, oops, let me, right there. Um, and do export ps1 we'll clean up the command prompt here okay and for this server we do need to install the hyperspace kind of node so we're going to do npm install global at hyperspace slash cli and um then we'll create a new project. And instead of creating kind of a form, we're just gonna create a little app that just lists the movies. So um, we'll model this after what we did in our uh, writer, but all it'll be doing is, is reading the data. Um, so pretty, pretty straightforward, um, we're gonna, create a server JS and we're going to create a DB JS and the uh, and, and then we're going to install hyperspace yeah, the user yarn this feels more normal yarn hyperspace hyper B and express cool. okay. now there's not a lot of differences between this server and the right server so i'm just gonna kind of copy 
the information instead of watching me type all this. Um, so if we look at this server, really it's um, identical, right? We don't need the add, so we can take that out. And we're just listing the movies. We're, we don't have our form because with the current setup of Hyper-B, it's, it's kind of write in one peer and read in many different peers. So that's, that's how we will be using it. I think eventually they're going to have um, the ability to do multi-writing where you can have multiple peers be both readers and writers. But for now, you have one writer and multiple readers. So we've got that. We don't need this because we're not going to create any new movies in this one. And yeah. So we, we've got all that. And now let's um, fire up our db.js. And for the db.js, again, it will be very similar. Um, we need to get our key. So we're going to go back to the writer. And we're going to go back to db.js. And we're going to grab our key here and close that out. And we're going to go back to our reader and paste that key in. But it's largely the same code. We're bringing in hyperspace. We're bringing in hyper B. And we're creating a client and a core store. We've got our key. We wrap hyper B around it. And then we've got our list function. So it's, it's almost exactly the same code. Now, since we installed the client, we haven't started our no daemon so let's start that okay and we we have our database here and we have our server here and we're listing movies so let's go ahead and start this up And it's running on port 3000. So we'll open that in preview. Okay. And we've got our app, but it's not listing any movies. So the reason it's not listing any movies is we, um, we can't find our database on, on the network. Um, so if we take this hash and we say hype like we did before b list and we add hyper and paste this hash in okay we'll see um that, that it's not finding it through the network and that's because we've got to replicate it so um let's do that let's go back to the writer and we're going to go into the db and we're going to add uh, db.ready which will basically return a promise and when the um, peer connection is initialized it'll uh we'll be able to run this function or if you had first class away you could just say await etc but um we're doing the dot then and then what we want to do is call client dot replicate and core and core is the hyper core that's part of our hyper b so we want to replicate that and that's going to put that on um the peer-to-peer -peer network so that it can be visible for our um peer so with that there, now this gets a little tricky. Hopefully I'll be successful. Um, let's try this first. 
So let's see if I can find it now. And I did. Cool. We got Ghostbusters, Groundhog Day, Caddyshack, and Meatballs. Awesome. So now if I run my app, Oops, what did I do? MPX, node mon, server. Okay. And let's open preview. And we've got our movies. Sweet. We're pulling that from a database on a whole other server um, through the peer to peer network. So if we add we're running this if we add a new let me open up browser preview okay okay so if we add a new movie right um let's add avengers right so we add that it adds to the database here now this is not set up to sync so it didn't get notified that something's added although you can do that um, but now if we refresh we should get the avengers in there so sweet um, in in summary this is kind of fun tech it's kind of cool with what you can do and it's all node.js it's, it's all um, JavaScript under the hood. Um, some of the encryption stuff uses a tool called libsodium, but other than that, it's all modules in the Node ecosystem, um, mainly from uh, this uh, group Hyper Protocol, who if, if you've been around the Node system, you may be familiar with Beaker Browser uh, they launched a, a prototype with Hyperdrive, and Hyperdrive allows you to do peer-to-peer -peer websites uh, or peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. Beaker Browser allows you to build peer-to-peer -peer websites, which is really cool. Um, and then before that, they got started as DAT um, and, and kind of this distributed um, data protocol but everything has been building over the years and and um, it's really exciting to see peer-to-peer uh, -peer kind of key value databases um, being built and so easy to kind of um, access so very cool stuff I uh, encourage you to play around with this workshop uh, maybe take it a little bit further there's some guides here on the hyper protocol where you can actually do some really neat stuff like um, indexing with Hyper uh, B and uh, build actually really uh, nice indexes and work with that. But um, hopefully this gives you a good start and gives you an idea of what you can do with Hyperspace and Hyper B. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.